Hey, this is Mackenzie Smith. I play soccer for the Chattanooga Mocs, and you're listening to the No Playbook Podcast. Hey, I'm Hannah Cohn. I play basketball for Chattanooga Mocs, and you're listening to the No Playbook Podcast. All right. Hey, thanks for checking out the show. It's the podcast where we talk with the outstanding athletes, coaches, and experts that help to make sports and fitness such an important part of life here in the Southeast. Big Chattanooga Mocs episode today. I've got two phenomenal athletes from UTC, both who have incredibly bright futures. First, Mackenzie Smith, senior soccer player at UTC. She's actually coming to uh, lead a youth soccer clinic with two of her teammates, uh, Claire Paglia and Zoe Mize, along with the Red Wolves Academy and Soccer Shots. That's going to be at D1 Chattanooga Friday, November 17th. Uh, I'll put a link in the description of this podcast uh, episode so you can get linked up that way. Also on the show today is freshman basketball player Hannah Cohn. I've actually wanted to get Hannah on the podcast since she first committed to Chattanooga a while ago. You might have heard about her last year as she hit 19 three-pointers in one single game. The surprising thing, that wasn't even a fluke. Hannah actually made 538 three-pointers in her high school career. We talk about her recruitment to UTC, and she kind of walks me through that entire day, her experience on the day when she hit the uh, 19 threes and made high school basketball history. I'll get to Mackenzie Smith right after this. Sit tight. Recruit Me puts the recruiting process in your hands. Most student athletes wait for college coaches to discover them. But coaches are busy and don't always have the time to find them. RecruitMe allows you to build an online profile to share directly with college coaches and is designed to help you enter all of the information coaches want to see. Your stats, your highlight videos, your academic information, your social links, and more. Plus, our team is here to make sure that your profile stands out with personalized suggestions. With over 25,000 coaches in our database, our premium plan gives you access to D1, D2, D3, and NAIA coaches across the country, and more importantly, gives them access to you. Enter your schedule of games and tournaments to let coaches know when and where you're playing so they can come out and watch you shine. Then communicate with interested coaches via our chat feature. When it comes to recruiting, don't make coaches research you. Do the work for them. Get started today at the Recruit Me app on the web and in the app stores. At D1 Training, what we do is in our name. Our D1 athletes become D1 athletes. Whether it's Los Angeles Angels pitcher Ben Joyce, high school soccer national MVP Brindley Murphy, or first-round NFL draft pick Cole Strange, we help all athletes reach their full potential. Five-star training system comes straight from D1 strength and conditioning programs, and D1 has trained over 2,000 professional athletes. Many of them started as young as seven years old. Check out D1Training.com to learn more about their facilities in Hardin Valley and Sevierville, and coming very soon to Maryville and the Tri-Cities. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm great. Things are things are going well for you this morning? Yes. Yes. Are you still on fall break? No, no. Our fall break is only like two days. So it's kind of a joke, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> big, big uh, trip. I'm sure you went on a vacation. Yeah, exactly. Big trip. Playing two everything. days, really? Yeah, yeah, which I get because I mean, I think they spend more time for like Thanksgiving and Christmas, so like fair enough. But I mean, I'm in season anyway, so it's not like I could go anywhere, but you know, come on, still, it would be nice, <laughs> exactly. I agree, yeah. Hey, so, uh, did you make it to the football game this past weekend? I didn't, we traveled that same day, so I just kind of was packing. Yeah, do, do students go to those games? Actually, yes, a surprising amount. Like, I went the other day, for, or not the other day, but a bit earlier for the ring ceremony, and I was shocked. Like, there was tailgating, and I was like, I didn't even know we were that kind of school, but we are. Like, we're a big football school. You're a senior. I am. Shouldn't you have known that, though? Should, is this the first time I should have. Been? I really should have. I, I don't know. Don't. I feel like, especially when it's in fall, because, like, football is a fall sport as well, so I'm just always tired. Like, I get very grandma-y. Like, I don't want to go anywhere. I just want to stay home. Yeah. Support from a distance. Grandma E. Yeah. I think if it was on campus, that'd make a difference. I, yes. And it used to be like right next to our library, apparently, like back in the day. And that would have been insane. That would have been amazing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's at Finley, which is also really nice, but it's a bit further. Yeah. 
so we were there and we had a setup and the tailgate you know stuff was great i was just noticing as i was there like i don't see like even a smattering of students so i didn't know is it oh, just really break or is it is it just something that they don't come to because it's not on campus i didn't know i would guess it was the fall break because at least the one that i went to i was like shocked like the whole bottom seats were filled okay maybe that's it yeah yeah so how uh how's the season going for you it's good. It's good. It's It's been a bit of an adjustment, especially from last season. We've lost a couple of our older girls, so the team overall is pretty young, which is always a good thing. But um, So just adjusting to that, and the league is always really tight. And so just everyone getting used to each other, getting used to the style of play, the speed of play is always an adjustment. And then the league is always so tight. So this year, especially, it's been really competitive, and people are within like points of each other. And so just getting used to that. But it's been really fun. It's been a huge challenge for us. Yeah. How about being a senior? Has that been a a cool opportunity, experience for you? It definitely has. I think this year has given me more perspective, just kind of stepping back and and thinking about, okay, so my time here is is coming to an end. Like, what can I put into the program and the people around me that wasn't there before I got here and maybe would outlast me after I'm gone? And so just that change of perspective that maybe like this season, obviously I want to play well, like I want to win, but it's so much less about me and more that, what I'm going to leave. Mm-hmm. So like working on being a leader, is that something that you've, I guess, put some thought into? Exactly. So I was, I was really lucky. I've been in a captain since my sophomore year. So just kind of growing up in that way, I kind of was like put into that position pretty young. And so at the beginning I was like so nervous about it, but really stepping into it this year and just being comfortable with where I'm at and like being confident in the position I hold has been really nice. Yeah. Now you, you mentioned when you're gone, I was talking with Katie with the Red Wolves and she was mentioning that you are getting interest from like, she say Crystal Palace. Yeah, so, are we not allowed to talk about that? I don't know. Just because I know so little about it, just because like, since I still have eligibility college wise, like I can't talk to anyone. So it's kind of just been this gray thing, which is always really exciting, but also kind of scary. But um, so I know. If you want that me to delete that out? I can. I don't, I don't, let me check with Luke because I don't think it's a huge deal because I haven't done it. I haven't talked to anyone. I have heard that there's maybe a bit of interest, which is insane because I mean, these are the clubs that you grow up watching on TV and you're like, and it, it's so surreal to think that maybe one day I could be a part of that program, which would be amazing. I know that I'm not done with soccer and I really hope soccer is not done with me. So after this year, I do plan to go overseas and, and try to play over there. Yeah. So we'll see. Well, you've got to do a lot with the, the Red Wolves down in Chattanooga is that as, as they're seeming to what is it gonna is it the super league that they're gonna yes, offer for yes okay. so they're they're stepping into the super league um I think it's 2025 which is honestly kind of perfect I think they're wanting to let it play out for a year and then step in when it's going to be more comfortable and that's going to be huge for Chattanooga just we have so many talented players and then being able to provide that next level for them for, would be absolutely major. So I would ideally love to go play overseas, but like knowing that I could always end my career where I started, it would be amazing. Mm-hmm. Any, uh, you played FC Lions. Is that right? As you, when you were younger? Yes. yes. I loved FC Lions. It's a club back in Knoxville. And I think honestly, a lot of people around here have, have like played them or played against them, but they are great coaches. They always want to, they're good with, putting you in front of college coaches, helping you to that next level. And there's a couple of coaches that I'll still text from time to time just to check in on it. And, and they're great people over there. Mm-hmm. Now, um, let's see, you didn't play double. Did you play WPSL this summer? So it wasn't WPSL. It was, um, it was the USL now. My, uh-huh. my first summer with the Red Wolves, we were WPSL. And then this last summer, we were the USL women's team. Got so it. Just a bit of a change there. Yeah, yeah. So I my office, I'm here in Knoxville. I'm I'm a mile down from where your old high school. You you worked out at D one though, right? I did, I did. I loved D one, especially when I was in Knoxville, I did it a lot. And so middle school is when I really started and then high school we would go there and train a lot too. And then a couple summers ago, here, one of my best friends is really involved with the Chattanooga D one. And so she would take me to training and doing the boot camps was just so fun. Love those stuff. Yeah. It's crazy the way it's, uh, if you're there super early, it's like adults or or folks really getting after it with the adult strength and the boot camp classes. And then once we hit the afternoon, like four o'clock, it's like so many young kids 
middle school kids, middle high school kids that are training? Yeah. So me and my friend, we would always try to go to the early ones and that stuff was intense. Like there's these people that are like 60, 50 years old doing handstand walks. Like <laughs> I was just against the wall. Like I couldn't do it, but it was so fun. Yeah. But before Hardin Valley, so you're from Louisville, Tennessee, right? So, yeah. So I'm from, really, I'm from Knoxville. And then my parents moved out to Louisville. So now I claim Louisville, which might be a little mm -hmm. wrong of me. But yeah, so always around that area, though. Well, we are building an, a D1 in uh, like Blount County. And it's, I think it's <gasps> technically in Louisville. Nice. They need it. We need it. We need yeah. something over there. Yeah. Well, I mean, those Mayor of Alcoa athletes, I think we'll uh, be able to offer some great you know, value for those guys. That's so true. And I mean, beforehand, they probably had to, what, try like 30 minutes to come to the D1 in Knox, like mm -hmm. insane. Yeah. Now, this is, as I was reading your bio, I saw you were born in Grand Blank, Michigan. Yes. I wasn't there for too long, but yeah, my dad, he's a doctor. So he was doing like his residency up there or something, I think. And so I was bored. And then when I was four, we moved down to Knoxville. Okay. So this is of interest to n nobody else listening to the podcast, but <laughs> I have one of uh, my roommate for all through college. He's from Grand Blanc. So nice. I've been to one town in the whole state and it's a small <laughs> little Grand Blanc. And we would go there every summer to, to have a big party that his uh, parents throw. But I saw that. I was like, Whoa, I've never even seen anybody else recognize that it, that it even is a place. Yeah. Anytime I bring it up to anyone, they're like, Oh, cool. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you mean grand rapids no 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 and then i'm just like you know what it's just up north it's cold up there it's all you need to know yeah yeah um hey so i mentioned blunt county by the way i gotta bring up that one of my best friends is coach feather of <sighs> maribel high school oh he's a legacy he's a legend there well <laughs> um I, I wish i could say that he said as as friendly of things about you but no, 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 actually something I said, I, I mentioned to Nora Jacoman, he he's told me, uh, it was actually when I was about to have her on the podcast, he said, there are two, he, he offered the number two. I didn't ask him for this. He said, there are two players in my coaching career and he's coached in several places, a couple States. And he said that I will never, uh, hate coaching against somebody as much as Nora Jacoman and Mackenzie Smith. Oh, that's the best compliment you could hear. So it was, and it, it, it was all, I mean, it was like, uh, you know, like friendly him saying he hated coaching it, but he's like, you know, that's friendly, but, but, we, but yeah. I, uh, there was always such a, have, yeah. like maybe a, a one-sided rivalry going to Maribel. We just, we hated playing Maribel. Anytime we could get a result was a good day. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't even know how their team is right now. They were solid. They had, uh, uh, Kayla Barr, who was doing really well last year, and now she's at Tennessee. Oh, nice. Yeah, I don't keep up uh, the Knoxville soccer as much as I probably should, but I'm always going to root for Hard Valley. Have to. There you so go. if they're lo if Maribel's losing, it's happy. It's happy days. <laughs> <laughs> Did you work with um? Oh, what's her name? Maddie Warren. Yes, yes, I love Maddie. She's been a family friend of mine. So she went to high school with my oldest sister. And so then she came onto the coaching staff at Hardin Valley, I think my last two years. And she's just always been so sweet. Love her. So now she's like a assistant AD, I believe, and still working with oh, the, wow. the soccer team. But this summer, so I did the the announcing for the PA announcing for 865 Alliance. Mm -hmm. and just because she was with the uh, uh they did all their games at Hardin Valley so she was up in the booth with me sitting for oh. hours and hours so she she's good helpful. people she's great people absolutely um so let's talk about this uh event coming up D1 Chattanooga you player Palia Zoe Mize who who is a local girl I've learned mm -hmm. she played at Baylor Yep. So you're going to come with the Red Wolves and soccer shots to work with kids on uh, just providing skills training, and we'll do some speed and agility kind of stuff. Are you excited about this? I could not be more excited. I think the best part about soccer is being able to teach it to the next person and being able to share it with other people. So everyone should come out for it. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to we're going to have a great time, and we're all going to get better. Yeah, that's great. We did one in, I think it was March, with a couple Lady Vols. And the kids had a great time and just talking with uh, Katie from uh, the Red Wolves and said, um, 
Uh, I'll tell you something that I'm, I might have to take out depending on timing, but Katie, I mean, we're exactly that's that's gonna happen. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's it's just waiting for a couple of T's to be crossed. That would be amazing. I do remember like when I was younger going to D1 and like getting trained like for soccer specific. So to have a coach do that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. But also what I really like is so, so even here, I'm, I'm here at the Knoxville Hardin Valley location and we've always got folks doing soccer training, but then there are the kids that do that don't even come here for soccer training, but come here just for speed and agility kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. I think that's really helpful too. Brindley Murphy, who last year got national player of the year. She didn't even do soccer stuff here. She just came here like four days a week to do speed and agility kind of training. And I thought that was interesting that she's like, you know, I can get my soccer coaching from whatever, her soccer coach, but she wants to get, I guess, the expertise of these guys for, for that kind of stuff. So that's why it's cool at D1 where you can uh, kind of approach several different aspects of the game. So true. And I mean, like when you're working on speed and agility, that kind of stuff comes out in soccer. And so even if someone is a coach and doesn't have an immense amount of knowledge about soccer, like the kids are getting coached like four times a week, five times a week, soccer specific. So it's OK that that's not what's on the agenda, because the soccer coaches really don't know as much about like the dynamics and like all the functions of it. And so to have someone who's specifically going to work on like your change of speed, the way you break down your vertical, like that is so important. And it shows so much in the game. Mm -hmm. Like our head strength coach, Jeff Smith, is the head uh, strength coach, strength and conditioning for the Red Wolves first team, USL. Mm -hmm. and, but he's not a soccer guy. If you mentioned, you know, a striker or a sweeper or a stopper, he'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. And I honestly think that's such a nice distinction. So like even our strength coach here at UTC, he might not be the, like, the most soccer knowledgeable, but in a way that's nice. So it's like, I'm going to come in and you're not going to tell me how to kick a ball. You're not going to tell me how to to block a shot. You're going to teach me how to squat. You're going to teach me how to run. You're going to teach me how to break down. And I think that's so nice to have that separation. Jerry. Yes. Coach Jerry Pastey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why it doesn't surprise me that he's, he's not a soccer guy. Yeah, no, he's, he's our head. So he's the football guy. So we're all kind of like afraid of him, but he's awesome. But ours is uh, Ashton McLeod. So he's very similar to Jerry. Though. <laughs> um, what is your favorite workout? exercise so my favorite which might not be shared by a lot of people I love power cleans like any day it's a power clean day it's a good day for me because just like I do love a good back squat but squats it always feels like you're fighting through it you know like you're gonna go slow down it's gonna hurt you're gonna come slow back up and it's gonna hurt but like with power cleans it's like you're throwing it and it's so like satisfying when you get to the top and just to get to throw it off I love power cleans <laughs> um and one thing I do ask everybody on the show uh, share with me one unforgettable sports memory for you. And it doesn't even have to be as an athlete. It could be as a spectator. So I feel like my most unforgettable was going to be last season, our Fermi game. Um, we were playing them as last game of the season. This was going to dictate if we had won the regular season. And we thought this whole time that it was supposed to be a win. Like we had to win. And so everyone was getting stressed out. We were, we were tied or we were, um, I think we were one down at that point. And there was a corner kind of close to the end of the game. I headed it in and we were tied. And so everyone was excited, but it was like, okay, back to business. Like we have to win. Like we're not going to win. And at the end of the game, it ended up a tie and everyone was crying. because we were like, we were so close to something that's never happened in this program and we missed it. And our coach came up to us and he was like, no, you just need to tie. We just told you guys that like, you just need to tie you won. And just that feeling of everyone looking around and getting like the water bottles, pouring water over our coach's head, like, doing something that's never been done in program history, like that will stick with me forever. Yeah, that's great. And, and, and I don't know why that reminded me that I forgot earlier to talk to you about your recruiting. I love hearing recruiting stories and yeah. somebody, somebody like you coming to, to Chattanooga, I'd love to hear like how you ended up there. Yeah, so like we said at uh, FC Alliance, our coaches were really good about recruiting, but it was just like at a showcase. Um, we were an ECNL team, but I want to say that this was maybe before we became an ECNL team. I just got noticed um, when coaches would come to our, our games and then I got in contact with coach McKinney and he invited me to an identification camp and that's when it really started. So just exposure at a game and then building that relationship through the identification camps were really helpful. Yeah. But you've had a great relationship there and, and, and a cool experience. Yes. I could not say enough good things about the program here. Like 
it's so soccer based and it's so competitive based, but they challenge you to not only become a better soccer player, but also a better person. So I think I've grown so much as an athlete, but even more as a person here my last four and a half years. That's great. That's great. I can tell you, I've, I've already kind of set my kids up that, um, you know, I, I'm liking, I'm liking, uh, UTC. I think this should be an option for you as well. And part of that's because Knoxville is just so stinking overcrowded that I want them to keep their options open. Yeah. And I honestly think I love Knoxville, but getting out of Knoxville was one of the best things for me to just be like in an environment that was completely different group of people that were pretty much completely different. And like here you have like a city, it's not as big as Knoxville by any means, but a city. And then you have so much outdoor stuff to do, which it's just the whole experience. I love it here. Yeah. I, I like anytime I get to visit. Well, Mackenzie Smith, thank you so much. We're looking forward to the event and I'm looking forward to seeing what you end up doing next season. Of course. I'll keep you updated. I'll keep you updated. Yes, I can. How are you? I'm doing all right. Thank you for taking the time. Did you have practice today? No, actually, today was our off day, and we had media day today. So, Great, great. What all is entailed in a, a media day for you guys? Well, so we actually don't have our uniforms in, so we took some, like, extra – um behind the scenes kind of pictures like we took like you know how when you play games they have like stuff show up on like the yeah like what's it called the score like yeah the big jumbotron yeah the jumbotron so they we took some of that and then we did some interview and games and stuff with like some of our other teammates so that's what we did today very cool i always yeah. think those those kind of uh, production shoots are are fun uh, mm -hmm. like did they have you make like silly videos or anything like that yes they made us like well they made us compete against our teammate and do like guessing games like like guess the movie guess the tv show guess this whatever and then we had to do our own like individual shots and we just had to like cheer and be like let's go let's go and do like our own like hand signals stuff like that so yeah cool very yeah. cool well thank you so much for taking the time to join me of course. Um, first up, I'm very curious about like your recruitment, how, how you made it from Florida as like, I don't want to call it like a viral thing, but, but you were well known for, uh, you know, your, your shooting in Florida. How did you make it up to uh, Chattanooga? So I, my plan was to stay in Florida. I love Florida. I grew up in Florida, like everything, my whole life I've been in Florida. So my plan was originally to try and stay, but I ended up obviously getting a phone call from Coach Poppy, my head coach, and he, he, on the phone call, I have never felt, like, so comfortable with someone, like, right off the bat, so it kind of, like, made me, like, intrigued to be, like, oh, like, everything he's saying sounds good, like, I like that, I like this, whatever, so... I go for a visit because, of course, I take my visits that I get the opportunity to have. And I come up here, and it's just – it was an easy yes. Like, it was – the only issue was, oh, I'm not going to be in Florida. But everything else, the people, the scenery, the, like, just the community, like, everything going on, like, it just – stuck out to me to where I knew I wanted to come here, like right off the bat, right when yeah. I visited here. So I love to hear that. What do your uh, folks think of, of you being several hours away? Well, they're still back and forth with that. Obviously my mom, <laughs> I mean, I would say my mom and my dad are still struggling with that at times, obviously being eight hours, nine hours away from home. But um, they, knew right off the bat as well that this is the place I should be at. So they definitely support me and have come up to visit me too. And we just had family weekend actually. So I got to see them and they'll be here for our um, first home game. So I do see them more often than you, like most people, most freshmen might see their parents. So like they, they've been struggling, but like looking forward to, being able to see me anyways and come up here because they like it here as well. So it works out. And I got to imagine that it, it goes a long way that they know that you feel very comfortable with the coach and mm -hmm. 
It's just the guy that you clicked with right away. Coach? No, it's yeah, for sure. It's make them do. more comfortable. No, yeah, they do. I think that's what makes them so happy is that I'm comfortable here. Like, obviously, they miss me from home, but it's like, it's good that I'm not not comfortable here. Like, I'm comfortable here, and I'm happy, so they're happy for me. So it kind of works out. In a sense, so about so. a a practice so far and like expectations leading into this freshman season for you? How have things been going? Um, just like every team, there's ups and downs, things going on. Um, I think there's there's a lot of expectations for our team this year. Um, I mean, obviously we won the SoCon like championship last year and everything, and I'm just happy I get to be a part of it. I'm happy. I'm learning under such great coaches and people and learning from graduates, seniors, juniors, even other freshmen, like just the opportunity to play for a team like this, a culture like this, like it really just doesn't get any better than that. And I think um, practices have been going well. I think we're really getting better every day, learning each other. And I think um, any way I can help, like that's what I'm here for to help us win. So whatever that entails is what I'm here for. So. Yeah. Can you tell the difference in competition already? Um, I can actually. Um, obviously, they say like the game is faster and it is faster. I think with my game, I had to learn to slow down. Um, it's it's more of like a mind. It's more you have to think. And I that's what I've been working on, being able to slow my game down, think more. And that's probably the biggest difference. Um, I already play so fast, so it's like I'm playing a fast game, but at the same time, you have to play slow and smarter, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So that's probably the biggest difference in, like, competition level, and yeah. Yeah. Well, talking about that fast play that you have, of course, you knew I was going to ask about the, the game with 19 threes. Yeah. I want to I wanna hear, like, not not just the surface level stats, that kind of thing. I want to know, like, in your mind, what is going on in that game? Can you walk me through, like, your whole experience that day? Yes, I can. So this was a random Tuesday night game. Um, probably our lowest amount of people in the stands that game the whole season, believe it or not. Um, so we go into the game, and I – obviously, I'm just hitting. Like, my teammates kind of, like – Obviously, when you hit a three, you're like, give it back, give it back. Like, that's just kind of kept, like, that just kept happening. And I ended up, I kept hitting and hitting and hitting. And I think at halftime, I think I had 11 at halftime, 11 threes. And my teammate and my head coach at the time looked up the record for how many threes because they were like, 11 at halftime, wow, like, this is good. And they're like, oh, the record's 17. Oh, we could get that, like, whatever. And we're all talking about it as a team. It's not like, I'm like, guys, like, let me get my record. Like, it wasn't really a thought. It was just fun. Like, we were just chilling, basically, in the locker room. The record at – the record of 17 was for what? Like, all of high school or just the state? Uh, All of, like, nationally in a high school uh, women's game. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so um, someone had looked it up and – it was 17 and they were like, you just hit 11. Like we can beat seven. We can get like eight, nine more, whatever. And I was like, all right, we can if y'all want. Like I really wasn't, it was just a night where I was just, we were just playing the game. Like we were up by probably like 30, 20, 20 or 30. And I was like, we can do whatever. So, and then, so that happened. And then I started hitting again and I ended up hitting 19, um, and yeah, that's just kind of what happened. And it was really fun. Like my whole, like not my whole family, but most of my family was there that night. So it was nice to like share that with them and my teammates. And they were really supportive of me. And, but I really, truthfully, I tell everyone who asked me this, um, I didn't think it was a, I didn't think it'd become a big deal. If that makes yeah. sense. Like small, like a small attendance game. My high school is like not super big. Like, I just didn't think anything would come out of it until it just got out there and someone reported it to our city news. And then it kind of just traveled up from there. I never thought something, it would get out like that, but it did. So, yeah. In the game. So there's an old video game and I mentioned this to honor Huff 
uh, back in the day, NBA Jam. And on NBA Jam, when you've hit a couple of shots, uh, it'll like you'll get flames on you and it'll say like he's heating up uh, yeah. and you can't you literally can't miss. You could dunk from the other side of the court. It's a silly video game, but that's what happens. I want to know, like, at what point, even in that 11 first half, was there a point where you were like, holy cow, I can't miss. Did you like have yeah. that realization? Um, I think I had that. I think I had that in the second half. I probably had hit. I'm not going to be specific like I know, but sure. I probably have hit. I probably hit 13 or 14. And I was like, I'm just not even thinking. I'm just shooting. Like, this is crazy. Like, this is, I just keep hitting. And I was like, I wasn't asking for it back. It kind of was just natural. Like, I was just playing and they just kept going in. I don't know. It was just a night. Good night, I guess, for me. But Heck yeah, it was. I, I guess. So, yeah. So after it, did you take any time to like soak it up and, and, and enjoy it? That night, actually, I was on the way to another basketball game um, for my old high school. And I didn't even think twice of that game. Like, I, that's why it's funny because I didn't think it was anything serious. Like, I'm rushing to leave because the game has already started. I'm going to. So I'm like, I'm out of here. Thank you, guys. Like, everyone's like, congrats, congrats. Yeah. And I'm like, I have to go. Thank you. Appreciate it. And then the next day, I think the next day I really was kind of soaking it in. I don't think it hit me until like probably a month later. And I was like, I hit 19 threes in a game. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. actually insane. But yeah. But it, and, and I also want to make it clear for anybody that's listening that isn't familiar with Hannah, that was not a fluke either. 538 threes in your high school career. Is that right? Yes. So that, that wasn't really a fluke. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So that's, that's pretty great. But I mentioned talking to honor a uh, phenomenal shooter on the men's team. First of all, he says he's a better shooter than you. Is that right? He likes to talk. He does like <laughs> to talk. I would, I would disagree. He's definitely up there, but mm -hmm. I would personally say me. I would pick. Well, me. I like to put together cool NIL events that you mentioned the community in uh, Chattanooga. And what I like is bringing uh, kids together um, yeah. cause I remember as being a little kid, like I idolized some of these college athletes and yeah. I think it's cool to give them the opportunity to interact with folks. So I was thinking it'd be cool to maybe have even the two of you come to D one Chattanooga and, uh, play some knockout with kids. That's always fun. Yeah, no, I would love to do that. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. We had a, a guy from, uh, UT Knoxville come down and play with some kids. Uh, maybe it was February and that was, it was so much fun. They, uh, all had a. A great time made some memories yeah no i would i would love to um be a part of that for sure yeah. heck yeah we'll uh we'll, we'll connect later and talk about that what about cool. like ultimate basketball goals do you have like are you super focused on WNBA? or are you just taking it one game at a time yeah i think i just take i have certain goals i guess for each year in a sense um obviously the ultimate goal would be to play after college as well. Um, I've grown a passion to play. So I think I would love to be able to just continue playing if I am able to. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I ever got the opportunity to play in the WNBA, I mean, I think that would be, mm -hmm. I would be jump right on that, but even to play overseas to travel a little bit, be a part of something different than being here would be cool as well. But I'm really just focused on what I'm doing now in college as I'm coming in as a freshman and all that stuff. But for sure. That's definitely like something yeah. I've thought about. So what about yeah. when you were like, like a little kid, like was, was, you know, very young Hannah, very interested in basketball. Did you play other sports? So I actually played softball and I wasn't really a basketball person at all. Like I grew up in a basketball family. So everything was basketball, basketball game tonight. He's coaching tonight. He's playing tonight. I have a cousin playing like all basketball. I played softball, so I would have games, play on a travel team, stuff like that. And my goal was to play college softball. Like, I probably had that goal since, like, up to middle school, I would say. And then I basically my parents couldn't – were like, you need to just pick between the two. You can't – if you want to be really good at one of them. And so everyone told me I was better at basketball, so I just ended up switching that probably middle school time. I think, but softball was my main sport to begin with. So how about, yeah. uh, off the court? Do you have like 
Do you have anything non-sports related hobbies uh, wise that you do? Well, right now, when I get a break, I'm in my bed. <laughs> but I I would say when I was home, um, I'm a big family person. I love I love family time. And obviously, I love friend time, too. Time with my teammates. But definitely when I was home, I would love to be, like, around my family, like, go out to eat or stuff like that. But um, here, I would say I don't think I've found, like, something I really love to do besides basketball because it's just – it kind of consumes you. You're a student athlete. Like I have homework to do. I have to study for this. I have to go do laundry. I have to clean this. I have to do this. Like there's a lot going on. So it feels like there's not a lot of time. Um, but definitely when I was home, I, I liked going to the beach. Obviously I don't have that opportunity now, but that was definitely a thing I like to do when I have a off court hobby in a sense. So, yeah. You need to uh, make the most of some of the, um, like sightseeing opportunities around East Tennessee. Cause there's some, no, there's yeah, some really sure. good ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I need to, yeah, that's my plan. Um, I obviously we get like a day off a week probably. And I think it's never really a day off. You always have stuff to do on that day off cause you're so busy, but that's definitely a plan to go around the city and do some things that I'm not used to doing. So yeah. Right. But it really is like a full-time job, uh, college athletics. Yeah, that's what it feels like for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what about off-the-court training? Do you do anything to like work on your vertical or speed and agility, that kind of stuff? Um, Honestly, no. I really, growing up training, like all I would do was go to the gym and shoot. I really never did ball handling. I never did defensive stuff vertical all that stuff like I just grew up and when I went to the gym because I wasn't mainly basketball I would just shoot and then now um obviously there's stuff I do like I do footwork stuff like to get my movements right and like be good on the defensive side like stuff like that I definitely do training in that sense I'm starting to do more um but other than that, I'm really just – we have practice. We do individuals. Um, we get in the gym a lot. Um, but – and we lift, of course. So those are just the main things. But, yeah, I would say just the uh, footwork stuff, like movements and, like, body control and all that stuff I do. So, yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. one question I ask uh, everybody on the show is to share an unforgettable sports memory, something – it doesn't even have to be as a player. I think we've we, we know a, an outstanding one for you but is there something even as a spectator or something even when you were a little younger that that just always sticks out to you huh um I think growing up watching my this is a weird one watching my dad win a state championship as a kid because he obviously I told you I grew up around basketball so I would always be in the gym and I, that's kind of when I started, I was interested in basketball and I was like, wow, this is cool. And he ended up winning a state championship. And that was like one of probably the coolest moments as a kid, because I got to sit on the bench and be a part of it. And I got to get a ring too, because I was a team manager. I got to be count as that. So I think that because then my freshman year at my private school, we went to the state championship. So we ended up doing the exact same thing and like that kind of sticks out to me just because I remember it. It's something I always think about like, and I don't know, that's probably what I would say as a spectator up to a player in a sense, right. um, my favorite memory, just doing that. So, yeah. Those are great. I, I can imagine, you know, you sitting there, uh, how old were you when that happened? When you won the state? Um, my freshman year, I you talking about my freshman year? No, when when your dad when won. Was oh yeah, when, yes. So I was probably like, I was probably like six or seven, probably. Okay. Have you ever I seen Remember the Titans? Uh, I've heard of it. I don't think I've seen okay. it in a while. Okay, it's a football movie, but in it, the coaches it's young Han uh, Hayden Panettiere, and she's <laughs> you know that same age, and she's just sitting on the sideline and cheering that that's what i'm yeah. picturing is uh that's gonna be a cool memory I, I imagine that was that was really neat so when you're anyway. in the gym one last question what's your favorite mm -hmm. workout exercise even in the weight room even in the weight room 
Well, my favorite one now when I'm in the gym is to not miss two in a row. So, like, it's a drill, like, me and one of my assistant coaches, they kind of showed me. They kind of do it within our program. But, like, basically you just go around to five spots and you see how many you can make without missing two in a row. So, like, you could be there all day, essentially, if you just keep hitting and making sure you don't miss two in a row. That's probably my favorite um, thing to do. And, yeah, just competitions. Anything in the gym that's a competition, like shooting-wise, that's probably my favorite thing to do. Um, but, yeah, I would say awesome. that. So how about uh, SoCon this year, another championship? Is that what oh, we yeah. should expect? Yep, expect it because that's the plan. It's going to happen.